Hello my friends, my name is Forge and welcome to a brand new video. So today I'm going to be showing you on how to make your own custom generated structures in your Minecraft worlds. Now this is going to be a really awesome thing if you want to make your own types of dungeons or if you want to make your own kind of houses spawn throughout the world or just things like that. Now we all know that originally the only way that you can have this work is if you had yourself an invisible mob spawn in, then it has a function file, then the mob goes away, then the structure appears. We now resolve the feature rules which allows us to go ahead and have our own custom generated structures in our Minecraft worlds, which opens up a ton of possibilities. And I recently made a video where I showcased off a really cool biome add-on, and that add-on had a lot of really great things. It had a lot of custom trees inside of it, and it was using this type of rule. So anyway, we're going to go ahead and take a look at this. So we have ourselves a nice little test house, and this is going to be the house that we're going to be using for today's video. And I'm going to go ahead and come inside of it just to go ahead and give you a little walkthrough. So we have ourselves a nice little chest with nothing inside of it because I want to point out that whenever you're making these structures, you're not able to carry any of the NBT data over, such as stuff inside the chest or stuff on a sign. So if you do have stuff inside the chest, I'm sorry, but that's simply not going to be carried over. But we also have ourselves a bed, we have ourselves a furnace and a nice little lantern, and right above we have ourselves a bell so we can go and ring that. Go ahead and save your game and then you can go ahead and close out of Minecraft completely. So we're going to go ahead and open up the first thing which is Bridge and I'll also have a link down below to both of these programs and of course the feature rule generator it's made by Machine Builder and he did a really great job with that. But let's go ahead and open this up. So the first thing that you're going to want to do is go ahead and click on create and this is where you're going to make your new project. So for this I'm just going to go ahead and call it test. You can call it wherever you want obviously but I'm going to go ahead and do that and do not click on register client data because this is going to be more like for scripts and things like that. So if you're playing on a phone or tablet, scripts, they're not yet able to be used over there. So I'm going to go ahead and click on create. And now we have ourselves all these different files. We're going to go ahead and click on open in explorer. And that's going to go and open up your development resource pack or behavior pack section. So I'm just going to go and open this up and we have ourselves test. So as soon as I click on that, we have ourselves all the files that we had before. So then we're going to go and click on new folder and we're going to type in features and we also need feature rules so new folder yet again then feature underscore rules and there we go you must have it exactly how I have it spelled right here for both of these folders so anyway we're going to go and minimize this because we are going to need that folder later on so let's go ahead and close out of bridge because we no longer need bridge right now so next up we're going to go ahead and extract the feature rule generator and yet again link down below in the description so extract to feature rule generator it's going to start to extract and now we have ourselves this new folder right here. We no longer need the .zip. So then go and open up the folder and we have ourselves all these. Go ahead and double click on the feature rule generator and you should get yourself this command prompt opened up. And whenever this is done running, it should actually generate some brand new types of things inside of here as you just saw right there. And plus there is a license. Now also the creator has stated that he does actually want people to give him credit. So whenever you are putting up the add-on for download, like on MCPEDL or some other website, make sure that you give them credit somewhere inside the download info. And so that way people know that this program is made by him. But I'm going to go ahead and close out of here. And we're going to go ahead and type in true because we accept the license agreement. So it's not going to download all the JSON files. And now, voila, we have the feature rule generator. This is where you're going to be able to choose your worlds. So I have my world right here. Your most recent one will be on top. So select that, select world, and then load world into memory. Now make sure that you remembered where your structure was. If you have yourself like a specific coordinates, make sure that you write those down. Because right here we have select a region. And this is where you're going to be able to select on where your build is. So as you can see, we have ourselves this little section. We have X, we have Z, and we have Y. So you put your X coordinate right there. You put your Z coordinate right there. And then you put your Y coordinate right there. Now sometimes it may look like this where it's glitched out a little bit. But as you saw my build obviously it's not like that. But I'm going to go ahead and come over here. I'm going to go ahead and right click on one corner. And then left click on the other. And we're going to need to do the same thing right here. So click from the top. And then I'm going to go ahead and right click on the very bottom. And now the entire structure is now completely highlighted. So we're actually done with this section. We can now go ahead and select export selected region. Now this is where the cool stuff begins because right here it's going to go ahead and tell you the selected region from which coordinates to the other and then over here we have still the offset. All that means really is how far above the ground it is or over to the left or to the right. 
So let's say we go and make this like negative one. Then it's going to be a little bit further down to the ground. We have ourselves the name. For me, I'm just going to go and call this the test structure. I know, absolutely brilliant. A very awesome name for a structure. But anyway, there we go. Now down here, we have ourselves a few options. Now save blocks to palette. According to the creator, that if you go ahead and press it, then all the structures are going to end up relying on each other for certain single block features and things like that. So I recommend to set even this off. We have align the chunk, which means that's just going to align, align it to the chunk that it's generating on. We have ourselves generate into rotations. Now, if you do go ahead and select two rotations or four, then it's going to typically create up some more files. But of course, for you, if you have yourself like a symmetrical build, then go for two. If you don't have like a symmetrical build, like an asymmetrical build, then go for four. It's pretty much up to you though. We have include air blocks. This is only useful for underground rooms. So if you're like underneath the ground and you have yourself like a structure spawning in, like a dungeon or something like that, if you want air inside of it and not have like a bunch of blocks in it, which of course you're going to need to go select this right here. We have results biome tags. So pretty much all the biome tops are put inside of here. We're going to go for desert. Now also before we go ahead and select that, there is presets. So we have beach, we have cold, mountainous, overworld in water or overworld on land. If you select one of these, then it's going to go ahead and select a set of biomes that will be put over here. But if I were to select, let's say, cold, I'm going to go ahead and select add preset. All the cold biomes are going to be put inside of there. For mountainous, all the mound based stuff will be put inside of here. Remove all. Now, overworld and water, all water biomes, remove. And then we have overworld on land, which that's going to be all overworld biomes. So it's also going to blacklist the three ocean biomes or water biomes in this case. So you're not going to find the structure in lakes, oceans, or rivers. So I'm going to go ahead and remove all those. And we're just going to go ahead and do desert for the time being. In which I need to go select that right there. I pressed the wrong one. But for this right here, you actually can go ahead and put in your custom biome name. So like let's say you made yourself a custom volcano biome. Well right here, you can just go ahead and type in volcano. And then guess what? You can just go ahead and click on add. And then that's going to add that to that list of biomes. So this can be very useful if you want to go ahead and put your custom biome inside there. But I'm just going to go and click on remove. So anyways, we're now going to go ahead and come over here. We got spawn placement set up. We have ourselves a few options. We can have a structure spawn on the surface, in the sky, underground, on the sea floor, and or between a set Y coordinates. And down here, we have ourselves the underground minimum Y and the underground maximum Y. Which means about how high or how low the structure is going to be underneath the ground. You can do the same thing for the sky. And the same thing for the set I on the Y. We have ourselves scattered chance, which is going to be the rarity chance. Now, let's say you want to make this a rare structure. Well, you can go ahead and type in a 0.5. You can go a little bit higher. You can go a little bit lower. It's pretty much up to you. But just keep in mind that 1.0 is equal to 100%. So by default, it's going to be at 500%, which is equal to 5.0. So for me, I'm going to keep it at 5.0. Just so I can go ahead and show you about how it's generating it on the world. But you can go ahead and do whatever you want for that area. I'm going to go ahead and come over here. Because we're actually done with everything inside this program. We can now go ahead and generate the JSON files. So I'm going to go ahead and select that. And now all of them are going to start to generate. And this can typically take a little bit of time. Sometimes it depends on the size of your structure. Whenever we're done we can go minimize that. We can minimize this. And now we have two more folders inside here that have been generated. We have the output and the output rules. Now this is where we need to open up the same folder that we had before for our add-on. So I'm going to go ahead and select this right here. And then I'm going to go ahead and minimize this. I'm going to come inside of here and we have our output rules. So I'm going to go ahead and grab all these. Drag them right over to here. And I'm going to come back inside this section. We have features. And now I'm going to come back inside this section. Now how many files do you think there's going to be? Well as you can see. There is 732. So if you had yourself like a really big castle structure, there'll just be like a ton of files. I actually have gotten one structure at one point that had 2,000 files. So that is quite a lot. I'm going to go ahead and drag this over to here. And believe it or not, we're actually pretty much done with all that. So I'm going to go ahead and close out of here. Whenever you're done with your add on, what you're probably going to want to do is go ahead and like zip it up, go ahead and turn it to like an MC pack or something like that. And luckily, you can go ahead and turn it into an MC pack. Just by pressing this button right here. So it's going to go on packages up. And it's just going to say down here package is now ready. So I'm going to go ahead and select that. And now it's going to go ahead and take us where the package is. So if I were to go ahead and click on open with WinRAR. Then you're going to be able to see 
that all of our files is neatly packed inside of here, which is really awesome. So that way you can just go ahead and distribute it. You can go ahead and put on MCPEDL. You can do whatever you want with your add-on. It's pretty much complete now. We're now ready to make a brand new world. So click on create new world. We're going to go down and we're going to choose a seed to begin with. Now make sure that the seed has the bomb with your structure in it. Because if you go to a seed and guess what, your structure is not in it, then you're going to be very upset. Now for your existing worlds, I'm sorry, but your structure is not going to appear unless you go to a completely unexplored area. So click on this. I'm going to go ahead and click on desert village because for me, I put my structure inside of a desert. And I'm going to go ahead and enable the behavior pack right there. Now also make sure they give yourself a good title, a good description, and a good icon for your add-on. But we're going to go back up to here. We're going to turn on experimental gameplay because you must have that on or else it's not going to work. So then I'm going to put myself in creative mode to end it off with and create. And as you can see, we have our structure appearing inside the desert inside of Minecraft just in a few easy steps. So if I were to come all the way back down here and I go ahead and take a look at our house, everything that we did inside the house should actually be inside here. Now also I forgot part of the roof. So that was bad on my part, but I'm going to go ahead and come inside of here first find the door. So this door right here. So as you can see, we have everything that we had in our creative world inside this area. So we had ourselves our chest, we had our furnace, our nice little lantern, our bell, and our bed. So this would be really cool if you want to be able to have like survival houses spawning throughout the game. Or maybe like some kind of random structure. Maybe like a very rare structure. It's pretty much up to you. And I actually reviewed an add-on to where it introduced new bombs to your game. And basically they use this to create some brand new trees. So you can find like custom trees generating inside those custom biomes which was really really awesome. So with this type of thing there's many possibilities that could come into play. Now I do think the machine builder did a really great job at creating this program and hopefully he will introduce more things to it. But I do want to hear your thoughts on what you think of this down below in the comments and if this video did help you out one way or another then let me know by leaving a like on it and subscribe so you never miss an upload. For now, I hope you have a logical day, and I will catch you next time. Bye!